1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 41 to 47. I'll be reading from the ESV. And the Philistine moved forward and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the hosts of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. If you could just uh, show us uh, the slide of a 10 symptoms of emotionally unhealthy spirituality. Uh, take a look. And uh, these are some of the things, uh, using God to run from God, ignoring emotions of anger, sadness, and fear, dying to the wrong thing, denying past impact on the present, dividing into secular and sacred compartment, doing for God instead of being with God, spiritualizing away conflict, covering over brokenness, weakness, and failure, living without limits, judging other people's spiritual journey. These are the symptoms of spiritually immature, emotionally immature spirituality. As uh, we were going through, and then as I was going through, it uh, read like my diary. And then there were a lot of things I had to stop and pause. And then I realized that God is giving me and then many of us an opportunity uh, to slow down, not to do more things, but to pay attention and to how I am before God and how you are before God, how we as God's people are before God. I hope many of you that are going through the course together that you will do it prayerfully, that it will be a time that God will meet with you and do a deep work in you. And then those of you that couldn't sign up, we as a church will be covering these the, uh, themes and topics anyway. Perhaps you could just uh, buy a Kindle book because we do not have any more books anymore. But then you may join together, join House of Prayer, Midday Prayer, where we are going to be doing the devotions from the book together so that we can grow and give space and then surrender our lives so that the Lord will meet together with you. I hope uh, that will be the case. Look at the next picture, the iceberg. And then look at the picture iceberg. And you can only see 10% floating on top, but they're 90% down below. And it's those 90% that you do not see readily and that are part of your life that's unhealthy, immature, underdeveloped, are the ones that's keeping many of us from growing as follower of Christ and as people that God wants to use. Look at next slide. Today we begin the first principle and lesson, and that is this. And know yourself that you may know God from the story of David. Let us go to God and pray as we hear God's word for us today. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We thank you for giving us opportunity to slow down so that we can pay attention to you and together with your grace, pay attention to us so that we will see where we are, that we may hear what you are speaking to us, so that we will be able to be renewed, strengthened, so that we will be able to grow in a deeper way. God, we look to you for your word, 
And then as your word is proclaimed, that may be the word that will be planted deep in our hearts, may be the words that will free us, may be the words that will encourage, strengthen us. Be with your servant, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I think it was about when my daughter was second grade, she came home one time and said, Dad, Mom, I'm confused. I went to church, no, I went to school, and the teacher and other people said, I am Korean. Can you believe this? And then we were waiting, and then she said, you know, I am made in USA. What are they talking about? I'm not Korean. So we had to talk together with her. You are Korean American. You know, uh, identity is a confusing thing for a lot of people. A tulip doesn't have any issue of what it is, uh, knowing what it is and living its call and the purpose and an identity. But you and I are human, and we get very confused. Uh, who are we? And then what are we to do and how we are to live? Uh, that identity becomes a tricky thing. Uh, you know, in the book that we are reading together, and there's a story, uh, one person, rabbi, and at the end of life, when all of us will uh, uh, stand before God and then go to eternity, people will ask, hey, why didn't you live your life like Moses? People will not ask that, but people will say to you, why didn't you live your life as Natalia? as Huni, as Charles. You know, in the biblical term, when Jesus says, I have finished the work that I have come to do, when Paul said, I have run my race, finished the course, they knew who they were and then lived their life. But there are so many people, many, many people, the reason why the church is in such a chaos and trouble is because many of us do not know who we are and that we are not living our lives the way that God created you and me to be. We go to the story that we read together, the story of David and Goliath. And then from that story of David and Goliath, and then we see this young man, David, unlike King Saul, who was the king and who had a lot of people, uh, who was liked by people, and living a life of false self, David, young man, was living a life true self. He knew who he was. And then he was battling against many other forces that were trying to confuse him. And then out of knowing who he is, he lived his life, his calling. We want to look at these th three things together. Uh, you see, uh, let me just uh, go to the passage uh, and then read it uh, one more time. Here, uh, in, in verse 46, David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, and the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike down, strike you down, and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the host of, uh, of Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel that all this assembly may know that the Lord Yahweh saves not with sword and spear, for the battle belongs to the Lord, and he will give you into our hand. In this uh, conversation and then dialogue interaction, and we see so very clearly, he knew who he was. He knew who he was. You know, when we think about uh, this identity. When you talk to people, do you know who you are? I say, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm a doctor, I'm a professor, I'm somebody's husband. And then people very immediately go to what they do. But do you know who you are? 
Do you know who you are? Sometimes people try to project and then think, yeah, I am a very kind person. And they try to project some kind of identity. This is me. But that could be an illusion or delusion. That may not be true you. But we need to get to the true you, true identity of who you are. Who are you in truth? We need to go to the one who created you and me. In order for you to know who you are, we need to go to God and get to know God because God thought about you and God created you. If you think there is you that God does not know about, that means you do not exist. But you are here because God thought about you. So in order for us to come to know who you are, we need to come to know who God is. And then we need to go to God and then find what God made you to be and what God thinks of you. He said, really? Yeah. That is so important. Yes, you can come to know the truth of who you are because you can come to know you, that God created you and me to be. Who are you? Who, are, who am I? You are someone created by God. And then you are someone deeply loved by God. You know, many times people think, oh, you are what you do. You are what you have. You are what people think of who you are. No, 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 no. You need to come to know you are who God created you to be. But as you begin to see who you are, we need to pay attention to how God is looking at you and what how He thinks of you. Made in the image of God. You are of such value because you're able to have relationship together with Him. You know, what's more, what's more? That you are deeply loved by God. And to the point that because you and I, because of sin that we were broken, he gave his one and only son, and then he has redeemed you, and then purchased you, and made you his children. And that's who you are. So when God looks at you, he looks at you so precious as children of God. And then God has made you to be the heir together with Jesus and reigning together in eternally. And that is who you are. And this is the truth. This is the truth at the very core of who you are. And you cannot forget this. You know, you and I need to come to know more and more about who God is so that we will come to know who we are. And then as we come to know him, we are learning more that, yes, Jesus loves me. God loves me the way I am. He loves me. He loves me. And he accepts me. He forgave me. And I am his own and I belong to him. As we think about that and as we learn that, one of the big things is, for so many of us, it is a statement of belief. God loves me. God loves me. And that's good. And I'm a Christian. I go to heaven. But the reason why so many of us are living, struggling so much, because the knowledge of God's love for you is not deep in your heart. And it's not motivating you. You see? What's going on is this. If you are not convinced, there is nothing in the world, nothing Nothing, absolutely nothing will separate you from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Neither heaven, angel, death, or whatever. Unless you are totally convinced. Unless you feel and know that God loves you. And then he gave his one and only son. And because he adopted you, because he welcomed you like a prodigal son that came home. And then there is nothing that will take you out of his love. 
and then you are secure in that love. Unless you have that confidence and security and conviction at the core of your life, your Christian life will continue to be at a very elementary level. You will not be able to make a big sacrifice or not be able to make a big stride or grow further. Friends, this is so important. I'm not talking to you about anything new, but this cannot be just a statement of faith. It has to be something that is touching and moving your heart. As you begin your day, you need to be reminded and know that God loves you. God is together with you. God is involved in your life and that He cares for you and He's walking together with you. Without this, there isn't much that you will be able to do for the Lord. Friends, one of the very important things that you need to do is because God is a person and to Come to know and experience God and God's love is a a, a relational thing. What you need to do is you need to make space. You need to make time. You need to surrender. You need to seek and ask, and you need to take time to pray so that you will encounter God, so that more and more and more and more and more and more and more that you will be convinced that God loves you so much, that you are so precious, You know, some of our uh, prayers that we have together with God is like sending cacao text, God, I have a stuff that I need you to help me. Rather than sending emails and cacao talks and then requests, what you and I need to do is spend some more time as you get to know time together with your friends so that you will get to not just talk, 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 and thank you, I'll see you next Sunday, but that you spend more time listening and being together. As you take time to read God's Word, as you come Worship God. Come prepared as if that you are really meeting God. And then as you are beginning the day, prayerfully walking together, one of the things that you can do at the end of the day is looking back and take time to look back and thank the Lord and see that God is really involved in your life. That begin to, in small ways, begin to notice God who is real, that God who speaks and God Who is making an impact in your life? Friends, this is a key thing. You know, what kept Jesus, you know, the going in the wilderness for 40 days, right before Jesus went into the wilderness, when he was baptized. And this is what happened. Remember, the heaven opened. And then voice from heaven declare, you are my beloved son. I am well pleased with you. Long before Jesus did anything, it's not about things. It's not about stuff. It's not about doing. And then God the Father says, I am pleased with you. You are my son. It's interesting. When Jesus talks about the work that he does, and he says, oh, this is what I do, and I'm a prophet, I'm a miracle worker. No, 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 no. All the works show that the Father has sent me. It was more about his relationship with God the Father. That was his identity. Friends, I hope you and I, We'll have an identity anchored in God's love. I hope that you and I will seek the truth of who you are as you go to God's word and as you come to God and pray and seek God. God, I want to know you, meet you. I want you to speak to me. I want to live in such a way that your love for me is the foundation of how I am living my life as your beloved child. Amen? The second thing that we need to think about uh, is this. 
And that we live in a world, there are so many things that are coming against you so that you will live with a false self rather than true self. You know, before facing up to Goliath, you know, what happened was this. God, <coughs> David went and then heard Goliath uh, just shouting and then you know, making all this uh, uh, utterance against the, uh, God's people. And then he got so ticked and he was so upset. And then his older brother comes and then said this, Hey, David, what are you doing, boy? And then you have come looking for trouble. And that's what you have come to do. And, then, and that's uh, what happened. And, then, and that's what he was saying. And, uh, you know, the chapter 17 uh, and then he was uh, keep saying, said, you are, you know, despicable. You are a proud, cocky boy. You just came looking for some fun. And sometimes an uh, uh, older brother uh, or family member, and then David's father who uh, forgot about him, uh, may treat you uh, as if that you're not that important, that, that you're not precious before God because, uh, hey, you're just a young one. Or that when people found out that I'm going to fight this guy, and then Saul, King Saul said, oh, who are you? What can you do? And then when he says, I'm going to go fight this, you know, the uh, giant. And then he says, oh, you're too young. You don't have experience. The other guy is so big, and then he can't beat you anytime. He said, what? You know, the leaders and authority and people over you, and sometimes uh, in their words and what they say, uh, does discourage us and then, and then influence us in a different way. And then also, you know, this guy Goliath, when he is faced together uh, with uh, uh, David, he's saying, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to just rip you off. And these words like this are being bombarded against Goliath, no, against David. You know, friends, these are some of the things that you and I go through. Why? Because this is the stuff of the world that we live in. And then in 1 John says, do not love the world, anything in the world, because the, all the world is about fleeting things. And then, you know, the, uh, you know, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. So, you know, people... And think about, oh, what do you have? And then how smart are you? And these are the stuff that is full in the world. And then that's what people look at you and measure you and then think of you. In the midst of this situation and in context, what you need to do is you need to navigate through this place staying true to who you are as a child of God as God's servant, and that is the key. You know, Jesus, right after he was baptized, went to temptation and led into uh, the wilderness. And toward the end of his time, and he was put into temptation, right? The demon, and came. And then the Satan came and, then, and told Jesus, Jesus, you must be really hungry. And then turned the stone into bread. And then do something. You have the power. Show your power. And then do something to prove yourself with your power. And it's a temptation of power. And, but Jesus did not want to do anything apart from the Father. And then he submitted to Father and Father's timing and Father's will. Later on, and then took Jesus to the uh, uh, top of the temple and said, Jesus, you know what? If you jump off here, one of the Bible verses says, oh, the angels will come and just pick you up. And then you will not even be harmed. That's what the Bible says. And quoting in a slightly different way. And then he said, you know what? When you just fall off, come down, everybody will be dazzled. And then they will say, whoa. And then people will love you. You know, when and be the Messiah with prestige and popularity. And because people like to see a cool dude who could do some stuff and then who could be very interesting. Jesus says, no. Jesus chose the Father's way. And then 
took Jesus to the mountain and showing all the things of the world, all this stuff can be yours when you bow and worship me. And it's a temptation of all the possessions. You see, Jesus went through the same temptation that you and I go through as we live in this world. So many temptations of the stuff, of who you are and what you do, and then people that you know, and then how important you are. And that pulls people, and then shift people, influence people, shake people from being faithful to God and living as God's people. Here, you and I need to face that challenge. You know, friends, uh, I think so, it's so important that we come to God and day by day put on Christ in small ways and learn to be faithful walking before God and with God. And then pray, Lord, open my eyes so that before I see the opportunity, what people think and all the other things, that my eyes will see your love, your glory, your cross, your purpose, your kingdom more and more and more and more closely and clearly so that I may choose to walk at the narrow path, not what everybody else does. You know, friends, you need to learn to follow the narrow path. Living who you are, following him and his way. Third thing that we want to mention here is this. As little boy David came, stood before Goliath, and then he comes representing God, representing God. He comes knowing who he is, a child of God and servant of God. And then he, needs, he knows why God has put him there. Because God through him, and it was God's purpose that God was going to deliver Israel from the hand of the enemy, and then God was going to do it no matter what, but then God was going to use a servant, and this time, this day, the servant that God is using is David. And then as he comes and says, God, I am here. God, I am here. Your servant for your purpose. You see, it's very interesting. The Goliath that came nine and a half feet tall, and then he was covered with armor, head to toe, from a head all the way down, and then he was wearing and an armor, you know, called the, you know, the armor of mail, and then it was like a, a scale. Uh, the Hebrew word used the, like the scale, like a fish, you know, scale, or a scale of a snake. So this huge thing that stood up there, who was declaring war against the people of God, and then saying all these things against God's people stood like one of those serpents declaring war against God's people, wanting to attack. And then David comes, little David, and then against him. And then he did not come with a sword and javelin, but he picked up five small stones. Interesting thing. This time as I was studying, I, one of the interesting things was this. What do you do and how does the Lord want us to kill the blasphemer? Those that blaspheme God, they are to be stoned to death. And David picks up this stone and he comes. And then he says this. This is not my battle. It's the Lord's battle. Today, the Lord is going to bring this guy down, and then he's going to do it, and then I am his servant for that work 
here today. And then he says, I come to you. You come to me with the sword, javelin, and spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts of God of Israel. And today, you're going down because the battle is not me against you, but it is God who is going to bring deliverance to his people, bring judgment upon you. You know, if you take a step back and knowing what we know and picture, who do you think is the real giant? It's not nine feet tall guy that has the cutting edge equipment and then strength and money and all those stuff. No, it was the little boy. Only thing that he had was a little five stones in his hand. But on his hand, the Lord's hand was with him. On him, the Lord's armor and love and presence was together with him. And this battle was of no match because no matter who, the one that God was going to use was going to bring down the enemy of the Lord. Friends, as you come to know who you are, as you weave through so many challenging things of the world and then grow to be faithful and then grow stronger and taller and then more mature little by little, more like him. You will quickly find my life here is not about my happiness. The, my true self, there is a reason why God put me here. As I become me, I'm good with music. I'm good with playing with kids. I'm good with doing different things. Whatever that you may be, however God has shaped you, you, as you find your fulfillment, that fulfillment comes together with you being a gift. God thought about you, but God thought about you being a blessing for other people, for the world. And so you are to be loving, serving God as you are being a blessing for other people. But then, those of us that are in Jesus Christ who have experienced God's grace and redemption, we know that God also has created you and me to be part of God's plan and God's kingdom. And you and I, if you really want to know who you truly are, to be a servant of God who will have a a place in serving God and God's purpose. Whether you are raising children who will become an excellent student, who will be a doctor, engineer, but who will love the Lord and then be a blessing. Whether you will be a teacher As you spend time, these kids will never know who I am, what I do after I leave here. But then planting the seed of kindness and seed of hope and then seed of the gospel in the lives of the kids and raising, whatever it may be, you have a vocation and calling as you seek to fulfill the purpose of who you are just like David here. You know, from this short story, I reintroduce to you three themes. One, your identity. You need to come to know who you are as you come to know who God is. Many of you know, oh, I am the child of God. I am to be the salt and the light. No, what you know as a statement of faith Spend time getting to know God and experience God and walk with God so that it will be the one that will anchor you, motivate you, and then cause you to live your life. Second, 
there are so many things being thrown at you because this is the world in which that we live. But learn to stay true. Learning to put on His righteousness and then learn to grow little by little faithfully in Him and His ways. And then thirdly, thirdly, and then find your sense of calling, vocation. Be who you are. But may your life be a gift and blessing to others. And then may your life serving and being a blessing to others allow God to use you. Let God use you to build his kingdom. You know, when we look around, so many people say the world is getting darker and darker. It's getting harder and harder to live as Christian in Korea and then elsewhere. And many of these things. But the thing is, you know, God is not out of control. And then God is not panicking. <laughs> oh, what do I do? What do I do? He's not looking for a new program. He's not looking for new activities, new buildings, and new projects. But he's looking for one man like David who has come to know what kind of God that we serve, that who has fallen in love with him, God, though my mother and father may forsake me, thank you for loving me. There is none like you. I love you and grow deeper in God's love. Be used of him and kill some Goliaths and then bring God's kingdom where you are placed. Let us pray. Be your true self. You need to come to know who you really are as you come to know who God knows of you as. That he loves you. You are his beloved. But let it not just be a knowledge. Let it be a reality as you come. God, are you for real? God, let me hear you, walk with you, experience you. Let your love be the motivation of how I live my day, my day. In the midst of living in a, a world that is a battlefield, that help me, Lord God, stay true and learn to. Trust and obey and walk faithfully. And God, help me to find my sense of calling and purpose so that I will not waste my life. That I will not finish and that at the end of the finish line and find out that, oh, I ran the wrong way and the wrong track and that I ran the wrong thing. But Lord, let me live my life. Let the accolades and then words and clappings of the world fade away as your smile, your face, your words and your invitation becomes louder, louder, louder in my life. Lord, help me and help us to be like this little David, who was not just the little kid. He knew that he was a child of God, servant of God. And then he knew, walking in life of faithfulness and obedience, and then he has experienced your power. 
and then he was the real giant the world did not know. Lord, help us to be like David so that we may be used of you, fulfilling our call and furthering your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.